Okay guys, this is our next installment or segment for our video lectures on uh, chemical reactions. In our last lecture, we talked about the complete balance equation and we talked about how we need to have catalysts that are there, states of matter, indicate if it's exothermic or endothermic, and then we left you with these numbers out front saying that they indicate how many you have of each thing. And the next step here is how do you identify what they are and how do you identify what number to put there. So to do that, we need to talk about the complete balanced chemical equation and what goes in there. So if we have the reaction C2H5OH, which we know is ethanol in its gas state, plus oxygen in its gas state, and we react those two together, what we're going to get from that is we're going to get carbon dioxide gas, we're going to make water in its gas form, and we're going to release heat energy. So this is going to be an exothermic reaction. Now, if you take a look right now, on the reactant side of our reaction, it shows that we have two carbons. On the product side, it shows that we have one carbon. Well, that's impossible because in the world of chemistry, we have to have conservation of mass, which means we need to have the right number of carbons on the left-hand side equal the carbons on our right-hand side of our equation. So we need to balance this equation. Uh, to do that, we put numbers out front that we call coefficients. Okay? So in this step now, we notice how we put some numbers out front. These are our coefficients. Okay? The coefficient is basically it's a multiplier. We're saying that everything in this compound we now have multiplied by 2. Okay? What it represents for us is the number of molecules needed to make the equation balanced. Okay? So if we look now, we have two carbons, and then we have a multiplier 2 in front of our CO2, so it also has two carbons in it. If we look at our hydrogens, we have five hydrogens here. We have an additional hydrogen here, so there's six total on this side. And we have H2 on this side, and 3 is our multiplier, so 3 times 2. We have six hydrogens on this side. We have one oxygen here plus three times two for seven total oxygens on this side. On this side, we have two times two for four plus three times one for three more. So when we break this down, here's how I like to do it. Okay? I like to pretend like I'm playing a game. And in our game, we need to make sure that the left-hand side of the reaction and the right-hand side balance. That's the game, okay? So if we're gonna play our game, Typically, you start with a skeleton equation, like we see here, okay? Very much like the one on the screen, where the coefficients are not in here. And now, what I want to do is I want to get these spots, or these places on the game board to work out. So in any good game, what do you need? Well, you need to play a place to play the game, and you need to keep score, because let's be real. There has to be a winner and a loser in all games, okay? So here's our game board. So we're going to play the game here, and we need to be able to keep score. Now when you keep score, remember the goal of the game is the left-hand side and the right-hand side have to equal each other. If you get them equal to each other, then you win. So we split the thing down the middle, and on our reactant side, compared to our product side. So on our reactant side, we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's what we have. So we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. On our product side, we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, if these aren't the same on both sides, you know you did something wrong in your game. Because you have to have at least the same elements on both sides of your, your compound. Let's take a look. We, we start off the game with two carbons. And we start off with five, and then one over here, so a total of six hydrogens in this compound. And then we also start off with one oxygen plus two more. Now I write it as one plus two, 
because I want to remember that these oxygens are actually in two different compounds, and they're actually between a plus sign. Because if I put something out here, it only affects this. It doesn't affect the two. So I write it this way to help keep, my, keep track of things a little bit better. It's a kind of a little tip to the game. On the product side, I have a carbon, so I only have one. I have hydrogen. Again, I have, I have two. And then I have two plus one for my oxygens. Okay? So right now, if you look, we have two carbons, we have one carbon. They're not balanced. So what do you want to do in your board to make them balanced? Well, I only have one of these, so I'm going to double this guy. So I double this, which means that everything in this compound, until I hit the plus sign, has to be doubled. So now on my scorecard, where I keep score, I keep score of it. So I've doubled my carbon, so I now have two carbons, and I've also doubled my oxygen. So I've only doubled this part of my oxygen. So it goes from saying 2 plus 1, so now it is 4 plus 1. Okay? So I didn't affect this oxygen over here. Take a look. My carbons are good. Go down to my hydrogens. Well, I have two hydrogens over here. I have six hydrogens over here. So I need to get these hydrogens to match up to these. So what do I want to put in front? Well, let's see. I got two of them. I need a six. Probably a three. So I put a three here. So 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3. So now I have 4 plus 3 for my oxygens. I have 6 hydrogens and 2 carbons. Well, if I look, 2 equals 2, 6 equals 6. And I have 4 plus 3, which is 7 total. And on this side, I have 1 plus 2. Okay. So somehow I need to change this so it equals 7. Okay. Do I want to put anything here? That's your first question. Well, I could maybe make this a, a yeah, that's tough because it's a 1, so I really don't want to change that because it's an odd number. Plus, if I change this, it's going to change my carbons and all my hydrogens, which I really don't want to change this guy. So I'm going to leave him alone, or for now, I'll just leave it alone. But I have oxygen by itself, and I got two of those. So if I left this alone, it would stay a one. And if I put a three in here, now I'd have three times two. This would change to a six. So one plus six is seven. All right. So this three then affects only this oxygen, and I'm done. Okay, so I win the game. Nothing goes out front. Okay, as you're doing your work and trying to figure it out, if you want to put a one in there just to kind of make you feel good, that's fine. I don't really care. Um, but the reality in your final answer, this one is not necessary and you wouldn't need to put it in there. Okay, so this equation is now balanced. I got one, three, two, three. And again, I'll put it in there just because it makes me feel better. Okay, I don't care if you put it there, it's fine. Um, we now have a balanced equation, so we win. All right. Now, you can do this same process for all the different type of reactions. Um, I recommend using the scorecard. Just make sure that any move you make in the board when you're playing the game, you keep score of it. Okay, so you got to keep score when you make changes to your game. All right, now some people will start off using this, and then as time goes on, they'll get better at just kind of guessing, checking, and as speed increases, you may quit using the scorecard. And then you may only come back to it when you get to a tough one or one you can't just figure it out in your head. Okay, And that's fine also. You don't have to show this work. It's just a very systematic way to approach this. Okay. Now, there are, of course, rules to the game. If we take a look at these rules, here's your step-by-step -step process. So step number one, determine the correct formulas for all reactants and products. Okay. So we already had the formulas in this example given to us. In some cases, you may have a word equation where we actually just write it out in sentence form. So you have to first write the formulas and then balance the equation. Okay, so good thing we learned how to write formulas in our last unit, so we can do that. Make sure you put the formulas for the reactants on the left, formulas for the products on the right. Then go ahead and count the number of atoms of each element in the reactants and products, which we did. Here's a little tip or trick. If you have a polyatomic ion, and it's present on both the reactant side and the product side, you can actually keep it as a single thing. Okay, So if you have nitrate as a reactant 
and nitrate as a product. You don't have to split the nitrogen and oxygen separate. You actually can, can keep them together. So we'll do an example of those here in a minute. So that's kind of a little tip or trick for you. Balance one at a time using coefficients. Please, please, please do not, I repeat, do not attempt to balance the equation by changing the subscripts. Okay, that's probably the most common thing students do. They say, oh, this is it right, and they start to change these subscripts here, and they change what goes down in these areas. Can't do that, because if you change the subscripts, you're now changing the type of chemical that's there, and we can't do that. Balance the equation only mathematically keeps the mass the same. It cannot change the actual chemicals we're using. So this is a no-no. Uh, when you're done, make sure all the coefficients are in the lowest possible ratio. Sometimes when you're balancing and figuring it out, you may end up with a ratio between all these that isn't as low as possible. Just reduce it down. So for example, you might find you might get a 2, 6, 4, 6. Well, if you have a 2, 6, 4, 6, you can reduce it down to a 1, 3, 2, 3. Okay? So we do that. Here's some other hints for you. Do the most complex looking thing first. Okay, so on this, I saw that my carbon was in this big complex molecule over here. So I balanced that one first because I thought that if I got the carbon right, it might make things go easier later on. Save any element that appears alone, not in the compound for last. Okay? I did that also. Oxygen was by itself, so that was the last thing I balanced. The beauty of that is, if you wait to do the one that's alone last, sometimes at the end it's already balanced, and sometimes if you need to put something in there to balance, okay, it doesn't affect anything else in your work. So always save whatever's alone to last. It makes it work easier. Keep polyatomic ions together if possible. We've already talked about that one. And then another tip or trick, leave O2 and H2. Wait to the end to balance those. A lot of chemistry has a lot of oxygen in it and a lot of hydrogen in it. So if you have O2 or H2 in your equation as polyatom or sorry as diatomics, leave them to the end to balance because typically if you balance the other things first, it makes it balancing it easier. Okay? So those are the steps. It's not that hard to play the game. You just need some practice with it now. Okay?